everyone. Welcome to the next session of finite element analysis. In this session, I am going to solve a beam element with UVL on it. We will see what is the EME for UVL and how we are supposed to solve. Find the slopes and reaction for the beam shown in the figure below. I can see one end of the beam has a hinge and the other end has a roller. This is a UVL of load intensity 8 kN per meter. The length over here is given as 4 meter. The value of EI which is flexural rigidity is given as 2 into 10 raised to 6 Newton meter square. I will be solving the entire question in terms of kN meter. Now let's get started. My step 1 is discretization. I will draw this beam here and I will mark the nodes and elements. Now if you see this diagram I have only one element so I will mark here element 1. It is between node 1 and 2. Each node will have 2 degree of freedom like in the case of UDL. So here I will mark 1 comma 2 and here I will mark 3 comma 4. So this is all about discretization. Now next step is development of EME. Now here at this point I would like to mention that there are two types of UVL. Now I will show you a formula list which I have made. Uh, here I am showing you the first type of UVL which is of increasing type. When you have an UVL of this sort which is of increasing type, this is the EME that I am going to use. Now if you compare this with the UDL EME, this much portion remains same, the left hand side. On the right hand side for UDL, here you had FHE upon 12 and here you had 6 minus HE, 6 HE. Only this portion has changed for UVL. So this is something which you need to remember. This is FHE upon 60, 9 minus 2 HE, 21, 3 HE. Now this is your increasing type of UVL. When it comes to a decreasing type of UVL, so this is the EME, uh, the left hand side is same like that of UDL. When you look at the right hand side, this is FHE upon 60, like the type 1 of UVL. Uh, here the numbers have got interchanged. Here you have 21 minus 3 HE, 9, 2 HE. So this is one portion which you need to remember for the UVL. Now we are solving the type 1 of UVL first. And then we will take up a numerical on type 2 of UVL. So let's take up this EME. So this is the EME that I have for the increasing type of UVL. First I will be calculating 2EI upon HE cube. This is 2. The value of EI is given as 2 into 10 raised to 6. And H. When I solve this I will get 62.5 kilo Newton per meter as the answer. If I calculate FHE upon 60, I will get minus 8 because this is the value of UVL, minus 8 into, I have value of HE as 4 and this is 60. When I solve this, I get minus 0 0.5333 kN. Now, I will be substituting these values over here. Now, if you observe carefully, if you want, you can write here for element 1 because I have only one element. So, even if you do not write, it really does not matter. But still I am writing here for element 1. So I will substitute these two values in this equation. And the value of HE is 4. So let us write the equation. Now I will multiply the 62.5 inside and this number inside. And I obtain. Now this is the matrix that I obtain. If you observe element 1 is between node 1 and 2. It has 1, 2, 3, 4 as a degree of freedom. So here I will write down 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Now this equation is the EME. If you talk about the GME, this is the same equation which will be my GME because I have only one equation, I have only one element. So my third step here will be imposing of boundary conditions. These are the variables that I have. Uh, here 1 and 2 will indicate node 1. 3 and 4 will indicate node 2. In that also 1 and 3 will indicate deflection, 2 and 4 will indicate the slope, 1 and 2 here will indicate node 1, 3 and 4 will indicate node 2, 1 and 3, Q1, Q3 will indicate shear force, Q2 and Q4 will indicate bending moment. So you need to remember these terms, they are not changing for UDL to UVL, uh, they are going to remain the same. Now let's go for the boundary conditions. I have already given you some standard boundary conditions. One is hinge over here, 
so in that case my deformation will be zero and my bending moment will be zero at this node one for this node since there is a roller again the same boundary condition is applied that is deflection is zero and bending moment is zero so let's go to the boundary condition i have w1 zero q2 zero w3 zero q4 zero i'll write here node one is hinged and here i'll write down node two is a roller so that is why these two are zero over here now whatever remains is going to be question mark now let's substitute over here i have w1 as zero since this is zero my first row first column can be ignored for some time w3 is zero so i'll ignore my third row and third column for some time now whatever remains is going to give me the value of w2 and w4 because q2 and q4 are zero then i'll revisit the matrix calculate the value of q1 and q4 so i'll just write down the equations now i have 2000 w2 plus 1000 w4 is equal to when i solve these two i get the value of w2 as 0.00498 now w2 is my slope so it will be in radian this is the slope at node 1 when i calculate w4 i get minus 0.005698 radian this is also slope at node 2 Now let's write down the equation for Q1 and Q3. I have Therefore I get Q1 as 5.3325 kN. This is my shear force at node 1. And I have one more equation as 750W2 plus 750W4 is equal to minus 11.2 plus q3 when i solve this i get q3 as 10.6675 kN okay this will be my shear force at node 2 now next i'll go for the check step i'll first draw the fbd of this body here i'll have two reactions so i'll write down here q1 is equal to 5.3325 kN and i have here q3 as 10.6675 kN now uvl can be solved as half base into height and it is placed at 1/3 from the heavily loaded end so i will be placing it as half 4 into 8 which gives me 16 kN and this distance will be 4 by 3 meters so this will be 2 4 by 3 which is 8 by 3 meter now let's solve summation of force in y direction should be zero i'll consider upward force as positive so this is going upward this is going downward and this is going upward when you solve this you get an exact zero which means i have tallied my solution here i don't have to check for moment because there is no value of q2 and q4 bending moment so i need not solve for that in this question so with this i am going to end the solution i hope you have understood the numerical if you have any doubts please write to me in the comment section don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel hit the bell icon for latest updates of my videos see you in the next session thank you